Hi, I'm Michael from Planet Naturopath, and in today's video, you're going to learn about the H. pylori virulence factors and how they can influence a Helicobacter pylori infection. So this can determine whether you get symptoms or not. Helicobacter is a bacterial infection that mainly affects the stomach. The symptoms can be bloating, gas, reflux, or poor absorption of nutrients, in particular iron, zinc, and vitamin B12. In more severe cases, gastritis, ulcers, and cancers can develop. And these are because of the helicobacter virulence factors. So who's at risk? Well, any people can get helicobacter infection. and In fact, about 50% of the population possibly could be infected. But not everybody needs to treat. It depends on the level of bacterial infection and if someone has these helicobacter virulence factors. The virulence factors show if the H. pylori can produce toxins which lead to the damage like that causes gastritis and the ulcers and cancer. This is a key factor, but whether you have high levels without the virulence factors, you'd still want to treat that because that can cause low stomach acid. Not all tests measure the helicobacter virulence factors. Commonly used tests like biopsy, breath test, don't measure the virulence factors. And later in the video, I'll explain the best way to test for helicobacter pylori that looks at the exact numbers of the infection as well as the virulence factors. So this is what a Helicobacter pylori infection looks like. Not the sort of thing that you want living in your stomach. And while it may look pretty to its own mother, Helicobacter pylori infection survives in the acidic environment of the stomach by burrowing into your gastric mucosa and creating a more alkaline environment. That's how it survives, but that's also how it contributes to some of the symptoms you get from Helicobacter. Helicobacter pylori infection. When you first get a Helicobacter pylori infection, it can lead to low stomach acid, and this can last from 3 to 24 or more months without actually developing ulcers or gastritis. You may have symptoms of like bloating, gas, constipation or diarrhea, or poor absorption of nutrients which can lead to low B12, zinc or iron. You also have an increased risk of SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and dysbiosis because the stomach acid helps to protect the rest of the gastrointestinal tract from infections. There are four steps in the process for a helicobacter infection causing tissue damage, ulcers or potential cancer. And for a lot of people they just stay in the first one or two steps and while this can lead to low stomach acid and digestion symptoms it may not lead to more serious consequences. So the first two steps is when the helicobacter infection reduces down the stomach acid and starts to with, go through into the epithelial layer. Steps three and four is when the toxin damage starts to occur from the virulence factors. While there are a number of different virulence factors, the two main ones are VAC-A and CAG-A. They release toxins into the epithelial cells that starts to create this mucosal damage leading to gastritis as a first step, ulcers as a second step, and potentially cancer as a final step. This is why testing for the virulence factors is so important to know how aggressive you need to be with treatment and also with follow-up and making sure the infection doesn't return. In particular, the virulence factors CAG-A and VAC-A can lead to the release of toxins that lead to apoptosis, which is cell death, disruption of the tight junctions or leaky gut and nutrient uh, deficiencies, and then eventually, and eventually in a small percentage of people, gastric cancer. So the standard way to test for a Helicobacter pylori infection is with a breath test, blood test, or a biopsy, when it, which is done under a gastroscopy. But the best way and a newer way of testing Helicobacter pylori is with the GI MAP stool test. So not only does this test the Helicobacter pylori infection and the level you have, but it's the only way to test for the virulence factors to know if you're at risk of some of the more serious consequences of a Helicobacter infection. It will also measure digestive enzymes, secretory IgA, zonulin, which are leaky gut marker, whether there's presence of blood, calprotectin, which is an inflammation marker, and beta-glucuronidase, which is part of detoxification. The GI map also tests for the antibiotic-resistant genes. 
So even if you're going to go down the path of antibiotic treatment, it can tell you whether these antibiotics will be effective or not against H. pylori. There's plenty of natural treatments for Helicobacter, so you don't have to go down the antibiotic pathway. To order the GI map test, go to planetnaturopath.com. The test can either come with a consultation or with not, and the consultation will help you with a treatment plan to help you get your digestion back on track. If you have any questions, just send us an email at test at planetnaturopath.com.